A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. And today, a classic round of the floor is a mathematical function that most people hate because it's a lot of casework and most mathematicians don't like to bother with it. This right here is an old exercise, an after lecture exercise from my abstract algebra class back at university, but I never solved it. I never <laughs> even tried to solve it, but it's not that hard and we are going to do it today and I hope you are going to enjoy the video. By the way, this video has been sponsored by the wonderful people over on Brilliant. More information at the end of the video. And if my throat sounds a bit sore, it's because I call a cold once again. I'm basically sick since February all the time. <laughs> Kid gives me something, I give kids something and so on and so forth. It's terrible, but we are going to drag through it. Now, what is the flow function exactly? Just as a tiny little reminder, the floor function is a function which basically rounds down to the nearest integer. If you have 3.5, it rounds down to 3. If you have 4.1, it rounds down to 4. If you have 4.0, that's just 4. Okay, as far as the basics go. Now, we want to show here that the floor of A plus the floor of A plus 0.5 is the same as the floor of 2 times A. And as mentioned previously, we want to take a look at a bit of casework. And before we get started, A is element of the real numbers. Now, each and every real number can be decomposed into its fractional part. So that's the thing behind the decimal point and the whole integer part. So at first we are going to redefine A. Let A be defined as k plus r, where k is element of the positive and negative integers. This also covers the negative real numbers. And we have r being element of, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically, no, not r element of q, for example, but r is um, strictly greater than zero, but strictly less than one. Okay, this makes it a bit easier to define everything. Now we can go ahead and plug our new definition in. And we are going to do a bit of casework here in the sense that we are going to take a look exactly at when r is less or greater than a certain threshold. Because if r were, for example, 0 0.5 exactly, what were to happen with the second floor function here? Well, then we would have blah, 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 plus 0 0.5, plus 0 0.5. This would get us the next higher integer, meaning we wouldn't round down to just k, we would round down to k plus 1. This is what's going to happen here. And if r is less than 0.5 but strictly greater than 0, then we wouldn't get to this situation whatsoever because then we would have something like 3 plus 0.4 plus 0.5. This is 3.9, which is the same as 3 if we apply the floor function. So we are going to go through two cases. Um, case number one is going to be r is less than 0.5. So what is going to happen here exactly? Then we are going to take a look at the floor of a at first. The floor of a is the same as in this case k plus something less than 0.5. It really doesn't matter for this case what the first one right here actually is, but no matter what we do we are going to round down to k overall. So the floor of a is going to evaluate to k overall. Now what about the floor of a plus 0.5? As per my example that I told you about a second ago, we would have something like 3.4 plus 0.5, which rounds down to 3. This right here is going to give us exactly k once again. Okay, and now what about the right hand side, 2 times a? The floor of 2 times a is exactly by our definition of a, the same as the floor of 2 times k plus r. Hmm. Now, if we have 2 times k plus r, this right here is the same as the floor of 2 times k plus 2 times r. And here's where our case magic comes in clutch, because k is an integer. So we would have 2 times 3, which is 6. This would just round down to 2 times k. Now what about 2 times r? Since r is less than 0.5, we are in the vicinity of, for example, 2 times 0.4, which is 
uh, 8 once again, meaning we are simply going to round down to 2k overall. Now let us see if this holds. Left side of the equation, um, the floor of A is the same as k. Then we would have the floor of A plus 0.5 is going to vary 8 to k, which is the same as 2 times k. And this right here works out with what we evaluated here. And now let's go through the other part of the casework, namely when r is greater or equal to 0.5, but still less than 1. Case number 2. We are going to have um, r being greater or equal to 0.5, but once again less than 1. Now, if you have that situation, what is going to happen to the floor of A? Once again, this is the floor of K plus R. And if we have the floor of K plus R, then since R is greater than 0 0.5, but still less than 1, we would round down to K nonetheless. Now, what about the floor of A plus 0 0.5? Now, for this case, what we are going to get is the floor of K plus R plus 0 0.5. As mentioned before. Now since r is greater or equal to 0.5, no matter what we do, we are always going to exceed 1 on this less part right here. Meaning we are also going to get, for example, if k is equal to 4, we are going to go over 5. So this is going to give us 5.1, for example, rounding down to 5, which would be the same as 4 plus 1. So k plus 1 in our example. Okay, and now for the right hand side. What about 2 times a? 2 times a, in this case, is 2 times k plus r. Once again, as before, this is the same as the floor of 2k plus 2r. 2k, just the same as before. 2 times 3 would give us 6. But now, since r is greater than 0 0.5 or equal to 0 0.5, no matter what we do, we are always going to exceed 2 times k by 1, meaning we are going to round down to 2k plus 1. And now, let us take a look at the equation once again. The floor of a plus the floor of a plus 0 0.5 is going to be the same as k plus k plus 1. And by what we can see here, k plus k is the same as 2k. And hence, we have proven that this floor equality right here holds for all a out of the real numbers. And I think that's a neat little problem and a nice introduction to abstract algebra. I think it was in the third lecture or something. Just because you really learn to go through casework. And this is what abstract algebra is mostly all about. But it's also about graphical interpretations and, and intuitions behind symmetries and the like. And for this, I would like to invite you to check out the contents of today's sponsor print out the time a little bit. And for this, I would like to check out. And for this, I would like you to check out the contents of today's sponsor print a tiny little bit more. Now, abstract algebra is a wonder of mathematics. It's hated by so many people, but it's also extremely beautiful. Just take a look at the symmetries of a permutation group, for example, or cyclic group. If you take a look at the contents over on print, especially in the abstract algebra course, you're going to notice that most of those very, very extremely abstract concepts are underlined by graphics and visualizations that you can play around with. Doesn't matter if it's about symmetries or maybe it doesn't have to be about abstract algebra at all. You can take a look at the calculus courses on their stochastics courses. Doesn't matter if you want to learn mathematics today, physics, computer sciences, chemistry. The whole world of STEM is at your doorstep when you are over on print and it provides you with some of the best online learning content that you can find out there on the World Wide Web. When I say it, I mean it. And I can talk a lot of stuff about Preant. I can talk about how crazy good their course concept is in general or how cool their animations are. But overall, you should just check it out for yourself. Just take a look at any of those animations that I'm going to show you here right now. The courses are just wonderful. They are so interactive that you are going to learn a new topic in no time at all. And it pretty much doesn't feel like you are forced to learn something. It really fits natural. 
it just seriously feels good to learn something new with Brilliant because they make it so easy for you to get started into a new topic with their crazy cool animations and everything surrounding their courses in general. You just try it out and see for yourself if it fits into your STEM schedule in any kind of way. With my link brilliant.org slash flammable maps. With it you are going to get free access to the whole website for 30 days, 30 day free trial of amazing awesomeness. And if you feel like you would like to extend your relationship with Brilliant a bit further, then definitely make sure to check out the entire link to use it in its entirety and get 20% off an Enneagram subscription, which is an amazing deal because they're adding so much content on a regular basis and they already have so much content available that you are going to be settled for years worth of new STEM topics that you can dive into. Check it out and see if it's something for you and you would seriously support the channel that way very much so. And I thank you guys for watching and I hope you did enjoy this nifty little problem and that you came up with a solution similar to this one or a completely different solution by yourself. And up until next video, I wish you guys a flammable day and I hope my voice is going to sound better the next time around. See ya!